This weekend, the Bulls and Cowboys convene in Circle City, focused squarely on winning. And today, the center of the target is inside GameBridge Fieldhouse. World number one Andrew Alvidrez hasn't succumbed to the pressure of having the target on his back for a month. He's been the sports standard. And at the moment, when it comes to the bovine ranks, the four-legged phenom making the most noise is Ricky Vaughn. It may be midwinter, but everyone has leapfrogged their midseason form as we bring you another 15-15 bucking battle, this time from Indiana's capital. You've got a real chance to win all of those points. This is Brady Olson. And Blue Duck just continues to impress as he floors another bull rider, running his record to 34 and five. Yeah, and this, this was a rematch for Brady, and, and the bull bucked him off pretty fast the first time. Made it further this time. That's a really good trip for him, too. Round to the left. Brady's timing gets off just a little bit. That's why you see his feet come up behind him. That's Blue Duck. A good score, 45. Expect to see scores like this, not only in the bonus rounds throughout the year, but also in the championship rounds. Was in the bucking battle earlier in Chicago, but it was a quick buck off. Red Demon is going to win this duel, and this one doesn't go for very long either. 3.6. Yeah, and, and a really smart bull here. You watch him start to the left, and Boudreaux's probably going to be the odds on favorite that direction. He just swaps it up, gets his weight shifted to the other side. Yeah, that bull, primarily a lot of rodeo history. He was out during the PBR team season. But when you talk about bulls and the fact that they are half the score, a maximum score of 50 for the bull, that one, Red Demon, has two 46s and a 47 on his resume. It's an automatic disqualification. Jesse Petri, third time is definitely the charm as he buries the Undertaker. 88 and a half. Now this is just a really, really good controlled ride. Left-handed guy, bull going to the right, away from his hand. That's, that's picture perfect what you just seen out of Petri. Jesse Petrie get the, gets the Cowboys in the win column. And often when that happens at the beginning of a bucking battle, the momentum is carried throughout. We've got a standard here in Indianapolis. It's 88 and a half. Let's send it down to Keynes. Great ride. What was the difference maker this time around? Uh, I think I just had to get the rust knocked off for the weekend on the first one. You know, that last bull felt really good, though. What's a key on a bull like that that is so strong for the whole eight seconds? Really, I just tried to stand out over him and uh, not really letting the power get to me, and it worked out. Well done. Thank you, ma'am. Greg. Eduardo, a lot of rematches in this bucket battle. This one should be to the right. You were spot on with your prediction in terms of the way the bull would go, but unfortunately, Eduardo just could not keep up with that speed. Greg, we take a look at this, and these big jumps out of here. Slow it down right here. Roll it forward just a little bit, and you're going to see Eduardo have to make a really big move. Now, you check that out. He's all the way down in here. There's no weight left on this leg. Everything is driving down, and he's totally beat the bull to the punch. At this point, all this bull's got to do is just widen out and go forward a little bit and no chance. Listen, I pay attention when you do all that drawing stuff. Usually that center line is supposed to be right over the bull. Right, right. <laughs> it's supposed to be centered with the bull. It's not supposed to be way off hanging over the dirt. He really likes to go to the right. This time he went to the left and Dalton could have rode him all the way back to Tulsa. No problem at all for Castle. Hey, not to get off. That's him a hat. That, 
That might be the most rider-friendly bull there is because left-hander gets on him, he goes left. Right-hander gets on him, he goes right. <laughs> that is a really good little bull. But just a fantastic ride by Dahl. 92 points. And a 48-point rider score. The highest a rider can get is 50. So that's a that's a big-time rider score there. Yeah, the ROB rider over bull of 4.0. Anytime you're over two and a half, you know a rider has done an excellent job. Castle absolutely just put on a clinic. In the top 10 of the world standings at the moment, having a great year. But cool whip absolutely sends Alves into a frenzy as that one will only go one and a half. Yeah, just just beats him out of the chute here, sticks him into his hand, first jump, and then launches him. This bull's going to be a real player to win a world title this year, Craig. He's just, he's big, he's strong, turns back. He's got everything that you look for. Well, and with numbers like that, the judges duly impressed as well. 45 points, typical of what we've been seeing from the best bulls today. Manaba able to manhandle the Brazilian as just with that electric first move, he had him fighting from the get-go. Yeah, in this pool, we talked about how he's gonna keep that intensity going. And you watch DeBrito, as long as his chin is down, his chin's tucked and his eyesight's on this bull, he's still got a chance. We'll keep rolling ahead here, because this bull, he doesn't get any easier. He's as tough at three or four seconds as he is right there. You know, you can see there, his line of sight is headed that way, and the bull is still coming to the right. You have got to see him to have any shot at all of riding him. Yeah, I feel like Manaba's a little bit like an avalanche, right? You need to have control at the beginning because it is only going to get worse as he keeps rolling downhill. Pacheco looks almost poised. can do no wrong at the moment and that is emotion from the Iceman Ricky Vaughn got to the end of his playbook it looked like and just didn't know what to do but that one is big 93 points this is look I and I still don't think they always give Pacheco the amount of points that he deserves because he rides, he's a lot like the great legendary Jim Sharp. He rides with such perfection and such control. ROB of 2.5. That's back to your point, though, Mac. A huge score, 93 points. Pacheco moves to the lead. What a ride. Pacheco is now in position to win his seventh bucking battle of his career. Oh, and right away, no contest. As one of the best this sport has ever seen is dispatched with prejudice. Yeah, there's just not a lot of room for error on a bull like this away from your hand. He's big, he's strong, and if you do not chew up his front end, you've just got no shot. And surprisingly, not the biggest bull score of the bull's career or of what we have seen, only 43 and a quarter. Be good either direction. He made effort. such a great correction in about three and a half seconds. And then at least from my naked and untrained eye, Mac, he looked like he got greedy. He really started working that outside leg. Well, and he's doing that because he's stuck into his hand. All the weight's on this side, and he's trying to shift it back over to the ledge. You see he's stuck, he's stuck. That's why he's letting go with that outside leg, is trying to shift his weight. Kaiki, congratulations. The first to ever conquer Ricky Vaughn and what an incredible eight seconds it was. Take us through every second of that ride and how you had to counter those big moves. 
He's an awesome bull. He's still pure fresh, young on the tour, but he impressed, impressive every run. Last weekend with 46 points, he's the number one bull right now. I'm really happy to ride him and make a really good score today. You always enjoy being a student of this game and studying this sport, a big reason why you're standing right here. Kaiki, congratulations. Thank you. Mac, I just shuffled some paperwork. That is a career high score for Kaiki on the Unleash the Beast level and has drawn him to within 100 points of Andrew Alvidrez. Alvidrez protects that number one spot. Leme falls just a little further back, but keep an eye on Kaiki. Cooter Brown, the name of the bull. Alex, here we go. Eight seconds at a time, half the score for the bull, the other half for the bull rider. The numbers are in. How about 86 and a quarter? Picked up a big win earlier this season, and now Daniels, the fifth-ranked bull rider, he's on Casper. <laughs> and like a brand new set of Coopers, Daniel Keepin is rolling here tonight. Jumps into a tech qualified ride. What are the numbers gonna be for keeping? You knew it wasn't gonna take long. Numbers are in. How about 87 and three quarter points? And a brand new leader. That gets to zero, it's a DQ, here we go. Come on. Come on, champ. In Indiana, how about you make a little noise for the three-time world champion, Alves? Third tech qualified ride of the night, and here's yeah. the deal. Keep in mind, Clint, half of the score comes from the rider, half the performance of the bull. Yeah, and that's right. And, of course, indicative of the score, 81 and three-quarter points. 81 and three quarters, but the silver lining for Silvano is this is a short week here. We have tonight, five seconds, Jose. Oh! And Blazer, a bull that he faced in the PBR team's competition down in Austin, Texas. And that bull bucked him off in Austin. He's gonna do it here in Indy. Now here's the thing, Jose, as we mentioned at the top of the show, he will also ride in the 15-15 bucking battle. Gotta go. is a huge surprise. Listen, I, I, I'm just stunned that he bucked off this one. And he's going to have to let this one go and get over this pretty quick because he is another guy that we will feature in the 15-15 bucking battle. Today, Tech Down and Wranglers on a bull called Homeboy. I'm, I'm, I 
get another shot. Careful. Another shot. Careful. Stay with it. Hang in there. Ah, oh, terrible. Man. Terrible. It's his fault. The he wind zigged. got it, right? Zigged when he should have zagged. Yeah. Let's see. It. No, 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 no. Okay. 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 <laughs> Let's go. Let's have Let's go. I feel good. The perfect season. Andrew, let's go! Here we go! Allow me to reiterate, that is the number one bull rider in the world, Andrew Alvidrez. And you said it, can you keep that foot on the gas? Well, there is nobody in this sport that has been preparing more, that has been working harder for these moments. And the number one man gets it done again, scores in 86 and a half points for Alvidrez, 86 and a half. And that moves him to second in the round. Yeah. But I'm all about Derek Colbaba in this one. Come on, DK. Round to the left, and here we go, Indy. How about you make a little noise for the Monster Energy Superstar? Job done for Derek Kolbaba here tonight in round one. And he evens the score now, one to one. The tack qualified right going his way. The numbers in, 86 and three quarter points. 86 and three quarters. Where does that put Derek Colbert? Gonna put him second, I believe. Number two in the round. You bet. Hey, right there, 86 and three quarter points. Go to that guy. I don't have the moment. That guy. Yeah. That's a pretty solid mullet. That is a, a pretty solid. Okay, what do you got? Do you got one? I got I got one right here. Like that's yeah. a great mullet. Go but my man Braxton right here yeah. has quite possibly the best mullet. Scroll down. Scroll down a little bit. Yeah. The cutoff Wranglers. I don't know if you can see those. Oh cut my god. Wranglers. Yeah! I give up. My man is rocking. I had one. I had one. I got one more. I, okay, come back to me now. Come back, hurry before this guy goes. Uh, no, come back to me now. Come back to me now. Yeah. Come back to. Oh, okay, go to it. We'll get to it. Flavio Zibiali. All the way back in 2013. I like it. And the 38-year-old veteran Cooper Tires Cowboy. Big smile on his face. Number of reasons why he's smiling. One is the score coming his way, 83 and a half points. And a score for JRV. Are we having a mullet off? The man from Middlebury, Indiana. This is Marcus Mast. <laughs> Let me tell you about the other side of that equation because we say it week after week after week. These are the best bucking bulls in the world. That bull yeah. man hater will win this one today but he's here tonight. He can still hear every single one of you. How about it for the home state cowboy, Marcus Mast. Marcus, show him the hand. Show him your hand to the camera. Yeah. Ooh, wow. wow. Okay. Did you see him come up and try? I'm like, wow, Marcus never shakes my hand. Like, <laughs> That's why. He is 18 years old. Here we go. Hey. 
And I'll bat it for the 18 year old. Outstanding bull ride turned in by Tate Polmeyer. Remember the numbers that are in the leader 87 and three quarter points. The numbers for the 18 year old 88 and a quarter. on the hips wanting to watch this replay back and here it comes Chase wow here it is buddy he's wanting to look at it again folks Chase Outlaw back to the locker room Outlaw fans he can hear you right now he's upset Demar. There's his son right there. There's Chase Outlaw's boy right there. Heading back with Daddy. Uh, well, kid has, has Chase eating some Skittles at the bull run. You can't beat that. And rock solid. Mauricio. And welcome back, Mauricio Moreta. A guy that has been fighting his way back through the Velocity Tour ranks, re-emerges here, takes down Rock Solid, and puts up a score of 86 and three-quarter points. 86 and three-quarters, and Mauricio moves into a tie for third and fourth. Here in round one. Colton, here we go. Help him. No. Took a monster shot. We talked about the resiliency of these young athletes. There he is. Look at a young 19 year old with an absolutely huge future ahead of himself. Colt Hevelo, he'll shake off tonight. See what he can come up with tomorrow. And right now, the 21 year old fighting to stay on tour. Come on, Casey. Hey. That's a great bull ride right there, Matt. We've been waiting for that for a while right there. Yeah, this kid with huge upside, and you can see his focus and determination at the beginning of this ride as you watch it back on the replay right there. Bull kind of got hung up a couple of times, but Casey said, you know what, let's go ahead and weather this storm, get to the eight seconds, and more importantly, put together a qualifying ride of a score 87 points. Roberts now moves into the top three out in the round. There's some low 80s in that first top 10. Wingson takes flight and Lone Survivor can't do enough. We start, oh boy. You're supposed to get out of the way as Da Silva earns 86 and a half, but may be deducted because of the exit. Trains on the track, man. Look, this is a, this is a really good ride. Stays disciplined, patient here, lets the bull get left, and then he's just really good to ride. 86 and a quarter, that's a good score to start it off. And look, you can't fault this in any way until. Until? 
the exit. And he just he just picks the wrong direction to run. Like this bull's just he's not really out hunting anybody. He's just leaving. <laughs> he was just well, speaking right in the way. Hey, hey, speaking of hunting, his spirit animal might be a deer because he was stuck in the headlights and frozen. But he gets the score, and he's giving himself a shot, a very good shot, to come back on one. By one of those injuries, a broken neck last season. <laughs> Kyler Oliver, two for two. We have a new overall leader and a new standard in Indy. 87 and a half. Really a good ride here, too. And, and look, you talk about the broken neck that this guy had to return from last season. And keep in mind, he was at the top of the standings when that happened and remained there for a long, long time. Well, as you will get to know, once you follow this sport for a long time, every rider eventually comes back from injuries. They just hope they aren't severe. Let's set it back down to Kate. Not many athletes in any sport battle through the injuries you've had and have come back. Mentally, how did you get to this place to be able to ride at the top of your game? Just a lot of training, getting my body back to where it was. I lost a lot of strength, been in a neck brace for so long, but uh, I had a few injuries after that that plagued me and just a rough, rough year, but uh, been training hard, so I feel good now. Great ride. Thank you. Craig. Oliver in only his third event of the season should make his first championship round as we move now trying to give this home state crowd something to cheer for let's listen to this crowd as marcus mast will take the victory lap. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mac, you were part of the team season. Obviously, your Nashville Stampede won it all. But Marcus Mast, at times, had flashes of brilliance like that. Yeah, now, this guy's just a great story. I mean, look, he's been around the tour for a few years. Never really was a threat to win anything. J.W. Hart saw something in this guy. Marcus Mass bought into it. And it's just great to see him come in and put up huge numbers in front of this home state crowd. And I hope J-Dub's watching at home. That ROB rider over bull total of 3.5. That's that J.W. Hart coaching paying off in spades as he moves to the lead of the round, 89 and a half. Joao's going to get a second one. This will be, yep, the re-ride flag gets thrown. And that's because the judges feel war dress just didn't do enough. And look, a, a lesser guy, this bull's going to lumber out across here. He'll let him jerk him down right there, buck him off, and everybody goes, oh, that's a big scary one. Not Joao, he don't care. He just rides him until he turns back. He's going to get his chance for his re-ride. Well, with one already in the bank, is the decision to go for the win or does it become a business decision and make sure you make the championship round because it would be a second score, which would basically assure him a spot in the top 12. It's going to be based on what direction he feels like that bull's going to turn back. And he just said no. But also just the middle edge that you gain by doing that. Well, Jeremiah, first and foremost, left the shoots in a different way, which at the beginning seemed to help Alvidrez out. But give that bull credit, because a lot like Alvidrez, Jeremiah was just going to grind this one as long as it took. Yeah, he's got Andrew leaning back, and Andrew is not ever going to quit. And the bull just keeps moving away from him. Great job by the bullfighters moving in there and getting him out of there. He's back, but he does not quit. You're not going to see his head leave the back of the bull. So based on Andrews 86 and a half in round number one, 
you can see he's just inside the top 10. So he's going to have some precarious moments as he has to sit, watch, and wait. Chase Outlaw just tried Blazer on, and he loves the fit. That's eight seconds. Great job by Outlaw right here. We talked about the bull having a lot of up and down. We watch it back on the Can-Am cam. You can see Outlaw is giving it everything he's got right here. And you watch this bull right at the whistle. It's going to hit himself and jump forward. It just rips him over his shoulder. Worth 85 and three quarters. And Chase has passed them all with our medical staff as he leads the shoot. Doherty, halfway through there, cowboyed up and gets his eight aboard Ninja Cowboy. Really a good job. Because Ninja Cowboy, yes, like he, big one and then turns back every time. But look, he gives you every opportunity. If you weaken, he will put you down right there. Doherty's got a chance to say, oh man, he's got me. Nope, just keeps firing, keeps going at him. That's a fantastic job. He's awarded 86 and a half, which puts him in a tie with Andrew Alvidrez. Let's send it down to Kate. Chase, it wasn't just that one injury, but three big injuries. You were out about nine months last year. How satisfying is it to turn the page and start 2023 with a ride like that? Uh, it's very satisfying. I just want to give all the glory to God, my friends, my family. I want to thank my wife for staying behind me. You told me retirement was part of the conversation. You knew you were supposed to come back. What's that feeling now after that? Uh, I don't know. I just had one day I felt like God spoke to me and said, you're not done yet. So here we are. Great ride. Thank you, ma'am. Craig. And he may not be done yet here this evening in Indianapolis. A chance to come back in the championship round aboard day late. That's a second score for Pereira. And if it's more than 82 and a quarter, and it is going to be very close to earning that, he becomes our new leader. I just love the way this guy competes. You know, it, it isn't always perfect, but he's always so fired up to be here, to be in the draw, and he's just going to give it everything he's got. He earns 81, and that will swat him just behind Kyler Oliver. The good news is, is he's headed to another championship round, which will be only his third of the season. He gets to zero, he'll be DQ. That's eight seconds of confidence building right there. Except a lot like we saw earlier, you need to get better at the get-offs, Mr. Hevelo. But he will be rewarded, 87. Yeah, really good ride. I mean, he does everything right here until, like you said, the get-off. And that's just a little bit of, it's hard not to relax a little bit once you know the ride's over. But it's not really over. It's not no. over till you're out of that arena. And more importantly, till the Bulls out of the arena. Let's send it down to Kate. You knew what to do on Spot Demon, but it's not a given. You can always cover the same bull like that twice. How did you make it happen two times in a row? I just tell myself this stuff's easy. It, I mean, I know it's not, but I mean, I get my own head sometimes, and I never stop myself if I say it's easy. Great ride. Thank you. Craig. Just, just telling a little white lie to himself, right? That's it's right. just easy. <laughs> 86 and three quarters is what he needs to give himself a chance at the championship round. And with a ride and finish like that, he has definitely given himself a chance to get another one. The crowd loves it. Boudreaux definitely loves it. Let's see if the judges love it. They do. 88 and a quarter. Yeah, and I, I think they're spot on there. That's a really good ride from Boudreaux. Good bull ride here. Up and down. He's got great timing. 
everything you look for. But if you get behind, this one is strong enough to finish you off. It's a good battle right there from Boudreaux. The 2020 Rookie of the Year, but he's so much more seasoned than that. This guy's been to five different NFRs. He won the 2020 PBR World Finals event. He's done a lot in this sport. His latest eight should make him smile. Let's send it down to Kate. Great ride, Boudreaux. You know you can make those big fireworks rides anytime. But what's the key to stringing them together and keeping that consistency? Uh, you know, just keep the good Lord first. Thankful for all his blessings. And uh, thankful to Rod Bulls with PBR. Just got to keep the ball rolling. All about perspective. Thank you. Craig. And we and his fans are thankful. He just put on a show. It is so long. Another great job by all of our bullfighters. It looked as though Batista was on his way to bending and not breaking, but short circuit ended it at seven. Yeah, there's a good look at the bullfighters there. They, these guys, they, every single time, you know, they, we talk about a bull rider, you know, being in the fight, not giving up. Well, these bull right, bull fighters, that's not even an option for these yeah. guys. That's that's just how they live. So he gets right underneath of him. And... Here they go, and again, highlighting what I often refer to as the triangle of protection. They just throw that safety blanket over whatever bull is out there, and great work by all three. And this sport would not only be unsafe, it would basically be undoable if there were not bullfighters involved. That would open up the door for Jose to close the gap. Jose just keeps on giving us highlights. Now five for five against top shelf and there's a very good chance he's going to go to the top of the round leaderboard how big will it be 88 and three quarters he slots in behind marcus mass yeah but you look at that rider score that's how he gets to that number 46 right there i mean that that's all jose in that matchup that's a nice day out of that bull everybody else is going to be 86 on him on that trip Jose drags 88 three quarters out of it. Let's send it down to Kate. You in top shelf. Here we go again for the fifth time. What can you say about him as a dancing partner? We're partners for a long time. <laughs> I love him. He's so great. And I think that there is no better bull than him for this long round tonight for me. I'm so happy. 88 and a quarter points. I'm just excited for the next one. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. Craig. Well, Lemmy knows he's going to get a next one because he's sitting fifth overall. But what he's also done, as I hinted at, he has now knocked our world number one out of the championship round. Look, this is a big matchup right here. Great bowl. Zeke unable to match wits or moves with Charmer. Nothing magical about that one. Uh, Charmer's the kind of bull that better get your mind right before you tie into him. Uh, I mean, 42 and three quarters, and I know he was going straight, but that bull is, he's doing it right there. Look at that jump. Whew. Over the front end. Oh, sucker punch went the direction that Vitor prefers, but he still couldn't win it. Yeah, no, he gave him his chance right here. Round to the left, but this is a really good little bull. I mean, a lot of intensity, a lot of action, big time numbers coming in for the bull, 45 and a quarter. That's championship round stuff right there. You might see Sucker Punch being one of the big rounds in the coming weeks. Is 45 and a quarter, that's enough to get old Riley to put you in a championship round. That's what we are working our way towards. I think it's going to benefit me a ton. Yeah. 
Tom Horn left the shoot on a mission, but so did Austin as he gets a second score. And we're going to see a new leader. He only needs 82 and three quarters to move to the overall number one. And he gets 89 and a quarter. Yeah, and this is a heck of a good ride right here. Austin Richardson, you know, he, he, young guy that had been really explosive but inconsistent and struggled away from his hand. That was picture perfect. Really a good job. Overall leader because he's also the round leader. Let's send it to Kate. You told me about handling pressure and what you're learning. You knew you had to make a move. What do you make of how you're handling this pressure now? Just um, just clearing my mind, just letting my riding do it and uh, letting my body take over. Can't be thinking about everything else except get eight seconds. Feel like you're back to where you want to be? Yes, ma'am, I feel like me again and, and I, I just gotta have fun with it now. Craig. Chew this one up every time. Kate Pohlmeyer will indeed move back to pole position. What a weekend he is having. He's going to add to that 88 and a quarter. How much will the judges give him? 86 and a half, and he's number one again. Yeah, there's a, there's a reason that bull's in the re-ride pen all the time. Like, he is just so nice. Everything about him. He sticks his nose out in the air, his back just stays flat. That's a really, really good bull to ride. Honest day of work gets him an honest score, and he gets to talk to Kate. He said, now I gotta talk. When you ride like that, you do. What do you make of the weekend you're having so far? I know it's not over. Yeah, I've had two really good bulls so far. They fit me well, and I'm ready to finish this thing. Well done, good luck coming up. Thank you. Craig. But I think he fits Cole Bottom. Not today. Shows what I know. Well, you know a lot. Just on this occasion, Derek Kolbaba didn't follow through what you were trying to get him to do as that one ends at four. Kolbaba's with me. He, he knows he can ride that bull. This bull does get pretty steep and kind of wads up as you watch it back on the can-am cam. It, it just gets him a little bit top-heavy, and, and that's what I'm talking about with rolling his shoulders back and getting his chest out a little bit more. That'll prevent you from wanting to go over the shoulder. I just think he doubts himself at times and struggles with it. The Maverick tried to throw in a change of direction, but back to your point, Mac, when he doesn't struggle, he's able to dominate almost everything he's on. 86 and a half. Yeah, no, when Luciano believes it, he's he's as good as there is. He can he can ride a lot of different bulls. I think sometimes he doubts himself away from his hand, but there's no reason to do that. This guy is really good. Does not look like that score will bring him back. Now remember, there sometimes are injuries we do not know about before the championship round draft, but at the moment, Luciano on the outside looking in, tied for 14th. Daniel Keeping will have first pick in the draft, and there's a lot of young names up there at the top of the leaderboard. It looks as though Derek Kolbaba did indeed get in for yet another championship round. But guess what? Championship Sunday is far from over. This is his fourth championship round. Ooh, Ivy League brought the heavy, especially at the end of that one, and it ends at six and a half. Man, missed a, missed a shot there. Look, Colton's doing a lot of really good things. This young kid's getting better and better. You watch it back on the Can-Am cam, and just gets him lean back. I mean, if he just stays where he's at, he's, he's got him road all day long. Hopefully this becomes something to build on as Hevelo gives the crowd a gentle salute. Keep in mind, we've already, here we go. Whoa! Marcus Mast. Nowhere near 
the match that Raiden Solo needed as this one is over in a flash. Yeah, just kind of rears out of there and hits flat, sets Marcus down, but then follows it up with a big kick, and that's why you're seeing those huge bull scores, 46 and a half. It's all about leaving out of the shoot on that bull. I know Gord McCoy and his partners throw a lot of love riding Solo's way, but I think he just earned an extra Scooby snack for the ride home with that one. Tell me, Legends won those bulls. He's got to have a clean out if he wants to keep coming back. Oh! -ho -ho. The bullfighters do their best to get Lemmy out of there. Just as Kate was mentioning a clean out, it looks as though Legend got that, and it looked as though Lemmy was gonna help lead Legend around to the required time. Yeah, and it, it looked like Jose just had this one in the bag, and this bull just does not like you being on his back. And you watch him change the timing up. Jose gets a little back, and then this bull throws a kind of a wild jump and a little bit of a roll in there. Oof. Yeah, that, uh, that gets scary here, right? I mean, Legend is not intentionally trying to hurt Jose, but when you throw that much weight around against the ground, which does not give, something does indeed give, and it looked as though Lemme was gonna be the one. Joao Ricardo Vieira, as we all just witnessed, took all the force and all the power of what Cool Whip had to offer. And thankfully, not just the bullfighters, but sports medicine is there immediately. Yeah, and they're tending to him, and you can see right away he got set up. So, I mean, he's awake down there, and it looks like he's getting up. You know, it, it almost defies the laws of nature that a bull rider can get up after taking a hit like that. Mac, you lived through it. You've been through accidents like this. And again, I just want to reiterate how great our sports medicine staff is. These assessments are critical. Yeah, and we've always talked about just how tough Joao is. And, but this is this is other level stuff. You know, he rears him back and moves forward and brings him. In. They're playing this inside the field house at the moment like we are for everyone back home. And the groans are beyond audible. Let's send it back down to Kate. I was just talking to Sports Medicine. As you saw, Joel quickly set up. They told me he was speaking to them immediately. They did, of course, diagnose him with a concussion. But Joel, they said all he wanted was to get on his feet and leave the arena. Well, this means when we thought it was going to be decided, it is not for the moment, but it looks as though Tate Pohlmeyer is injured. He's going to get a re-ride opportunity if he can take it. Yeah, and they, they need to look at this one back because here's, here's the differences, right? It, it's a re-ride opportunity no matter what, but is it a re-ride opportunity with the score or not a score? So what's gonna determine that is if when this bull flops down on his side like he does, and he makes a heck of a ride just by the way, 
until this bull flops down. But when this bull flops down, does does the eight seconds, has time expired by the time Tate hits the ground? Mac, with everything you just said, I'm looking over your shoulder and now we're seeing it. Tate Pohlmeyer is being carried out of the arena. Re-ride or not, he's not gonna be able to get on another bull. Now, it is important as to what you just said. If they give him the eight seconds, let's listen. He just said he can't do it. He just waved off the re-ride. We now got word it was a buck off, so keeping's your winner. Daniel Keeping was hoping for an exclamation point. Instead, he will just have to be happy with a second career win. Bottom line, Justin McBride, the Bulls sent another clear message in this championship round. That was brutal, man. The Bulls, yeah, the Bulls roughed the guys up. Big time here. Smokestack having a good day. It looked like Daniel was in total control. Just starts getting back further and further, putting too much pressure on his hand. Got to get forward when that front ends up. A lot of buck offs in this championship round. Let's send it to Kate. Daniel, what a weekend. And right now we're seeing the reality of the sport. You had some huge rides and now you're standing here shaking in pain. So first, uh, uh, update after that uh, aftermath there and how you're feeling. A little disappointed, not the way I really want to win. But I mean, these guys put out. I just really wish I topped it off on that last pull, but we'll get them next time. And again, just a good event and you've got the buckle. You were one for 13 coming into this week and turned it all around. What was the difference maker here in Indianapolis? Kind of going home and resetting and kind of resetting your brain and body to it and having the right people supporting you is a big thing. And coming in this week, I felt a little fresher, a little more comfortable and ready for it. So thank God everybody that helped. You said all the right people. What do you say we bring in your wife? Your daughter, Sage, wife Shelby here as well. What does it mean to have the support of them here with you? Oh, it means a lot. I mean, that's my whole world right there. So being able to see your whole world, watch what you do for a living, helps your confidence a lot. We'll let you celebrate with them. Congratulations to all three of you. Thank you. Our Kubota other week. Lemme now 53 and a half behind. Pacheco within 100. Join us February 5th at noon Eastern on CBS for the next 15-15 bucking battle. That'll be from Sacramento, California. And then you can catch the next Unleash the Beast event at 5 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports Network. For Justin McBride, Kate Harrison, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Hummer. Thanks for watching.